Hello, this is Christy Felk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here again today with another card. I'm using a celebration stamp set called Home to Roost. I'm also using a Buffalo Check. This is in the holiday catalog, but it's still available to purchase. It's a carryover item, and you can find it in my online store, and you can go there by going to my blog, www.createwithchristy.com, and click Shop Now, and then you can search for Buffalo Check, and that'll you'll find it that way. It's not in any catalogs right now. And I'm also using the tin tile embossing folder, and that was also in the holiday catalog, and it's the same thing. It's not in a catalog right now, but you can still purchase it. You can find that at a, in my online store. And the same with a braided trim. I didn't realize that until I started naming off everything. This is also in the holiday catalog, but you can get it at the online store. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm going to show you the Home to Roof stamp set. It's a celebration stamp set, and that means when you place a $50 order before shipping and tax, you can choose this as your free celebration item. Uh, celebration runs from now until March 31st. Um, there are two different levels. This is a level one. Level one celebration uh, products you can get with a free $50 order. A free uh, level two would be with a $100 order. And or you could also do two level ones if you'd rather not get one of the hundred dollar the level two ones. But this is level one. I just love the rooster on this, and he makes really great vintage cards, country looking cards. There's just a lot of things you can do with this stamp set. And I'm also using the greeting here, enjoy the simple moments, and this will be stamped on the inside of the card, the wheat. And here's the buffalo check that I was telling you about. I just love this background. It this is my favorite background. It just it's makes great uh, backgrounds. I just love it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get this out. We'll go ahead, since I've got it out, I'm going to lay it flat, and I'm going to take my Cherry Cobbler ink pad, and I don't need the whole thing done, but because I'm going to be using a 2 inch by 4 inch piece of crumb cake cardstock, but I want to make sure it's over 2 inches wide. just makes it a little easier. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'll bring in my, uh, sorry, it's vanilla that I'm using, not the crumb cake. So this is a four inch by two inch. Just kind of put that there. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. And this is definitely scrap paper. <laughs> and rub all over that cardstock. And make sure you go over the edges. You don't just want to do this center. That's why I put this paper on, because I'm putting my ink, my fingers all over this stamp. Then you can lift this up, and there's the image. Okay, get this off, and I'll clean that later. Now, if you look at my card, I wanted it more of a vintage look. I thought the vanilla was a little too bright. So I'm going to take my crumb cake ink pad and a spon stamping sponge. I'm just going to sponge different places on here, and especially on the edges. I want the edges to look a little darker. I think the edges are easier to do when you just pick it up and flick it. So that looks pretty vintage to me. So we're going to put that over to the side. Okay, now that we're done with the buffalo check, I'm going to bring in a piece of crumb cake. This is a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece. I'm going to bring my greeting in and enjoy the simple moments. And I'm going to stamp it with the Cajun Craze ink. So just ink that up. Make sure it's inked up well. I'm going to stamp it here along the bottom. Okay, and that's it. Now I'm going to bring in my Big Shot. Oh, here it is. Here's my Big Shot. And I'm only going to emboss the top half of this piece. So I'm going to grab my tin tile folder. In one video I'd said the new lace one is my favorite. This is tied with it. I forgot about the tin tile. I love this one. I tend to like vintage looking projects the best, so that's probably why I'm drawn to these two. So I don't want to do the whole thing because I want to keep the uh, greeting just plain. So actually I'm going to do a little more than half. It's going to be like that. I'm going to take the Big Shot platform, we'll put this in there, and then just put one standard cutting pad on there because this is an extra thick folder so it only needs one standard cutting pad. And then run it through. Okay, I'll get this out of the way. 
Now you see I've only got the top two-thirds about embossed. Okay. So now I'm going to take, bring my buffalo check piece back in, put some snail on the back. I'm going to put it right above the greeting. Make sure it's straight. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to bring my braided uh, trim in. This is a 3 16 braided linen trim. Like I said, you can get this at the online store. It's not in a catalog right now. But this is a 6 inch piece. It's going to go near the top. So I'm going to look and see where this is at. So that's going to be about there. I tend to make it a little extra thick in case I don't get it right where I want it. So that's the snail adhesive. Put this where I want it. And then fold this across. And because I made that extra wide, I know the um, trim is going to land on a piece of the adhesive. A lot of times I'll put the adhesive directly on the ribbon because this is such a narrow piece. It's a little hard to do that, and I think this holds it better. So there, I've got them both on top of the adhesive on the back. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of cherry cobbler. This is an eight and a half by five and a half inch piece. I'm going to fold it in half for the card base. Bring my bone folder in. I'm going to put some snail on this. And I try to also put some on top of the trim so it'll stick to the cardstock better. Okay. That's ready to go. And now we're going to do the rooster part. So I'm going to grab a piece of very vanilla. It's a three quarter inch by three and a quarter inch piece. And I'm going to be using the Stitched Shapes Framelits. This is from the um, annual catalog. We've had these for a while. You get four circles, four ovals, and then four squares. So I'm going to be using the largest square when we die cut this, but I'll put that over the side for right now. First, I'm going to stamp my rooster. I'm going to stamp him with the Tuxedo Black Memento. Make sure he's covered up really well. Stamp him close to the middle, doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be die cutting him. Looks pretty good. Get my lid on this so it doesn't dry up on me. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my blender pen and I'm going to color, he, color him in. Shouldn't have opened these up, I forgot I needed to do this. When you watercolor with ink pads, you squeeze the lid and the bottom together so that way you get a nice pool of ink here in the lid. So I did his tail in Bermuda Bay, and I'm going to kind of scribble, because this is kind of a scribbly looking drawing of him, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It actually looks better if you don't make it perfect. So I'm just making his whole tail, picking up ink as I go. When it starts to lighten up too much, then I add a little more ink. Okay, that's pretty good. Then you need a scrap piece of paper, which I forgot to get. <laughs> Grab one here out of my stash. And then you just kind of keep coloring on it until the ink comes out because you don't want to mix the colors. Okay, put that over here at the side. Now I want to use Cajun Craze on this little section here. So close this up. You squeeze it. Open it up. And there's my ink pool. Sometimes with these new ink pads, if they're kind of tight, if you can't squeeze any on there, you can also take an ink refill and put a couple drops on here. But here, this is a section I did in the Cajun Craze. And some of it I want it to be a little lighter, so it gives a little dimension. So if it lightens up on me, that's okay. And I can always go back and add a little more. That's a little too light. So that's all I want to be with the Cajun Craze. Get it cleaned off with my scrap paper. Here's my Rich Razzleberry, and I've already got ink in it. And this is what I did his stomach section in. Like I said, the sloppier the better, because that kind of goes along with the look of the rooster. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I want Clean it off again. You always want to make sure you clean it off. Now I'm going to take the crushed curry. I've already got ink in it too, so I'll go ahead. And this, I went ahead and did the rest of his body with the Cajun crate, uh, crushed curry, sorry. And even a 
his head. I think I'm going to make his head a little darker. Here we go. Scribble on there. Okay. And now we got to do his gobblers, I think is what it's called. Get all the ink off of there. Now I'm going to use my cherry cobbler. It does look like I've got enough on that one, so I'm going to squeeze it really hard. These you have to squeeze a little harder than new ones. That got me my ink. Pick up some red, cherry cobbler, and do this little gobbler. Perfect. Like I said, the scribblier the better. And I forgot I did put a little bit of crushed curry, because I figure he's probably looks like he's standing on straw. So we'll just take a little bit of the yellow and kind of scribble that down here. That looks pretty good. Okay, he's all colored in. You see how that scribbly effect just looks so good on it? I really like that. Okay, now I'm going to bring my Big Shot in, get some of this stuff out of the way. And this time I'm going to use my magnetic platform because I don't want it to move around. A standard cutting pad. Put my rooster down. This is that largest square in the stitch shaped framelits. Kind of centered around him. Okay, that looks pretty good. Get another standard cutting pad on top. And run him through. Okay. I have fallen in love with these stitched framelits that we have. They're probably my, they're my go-to dies anymore. Okay, now I need to grab my crumb cake again because I wanted him to, that vanilla was just too bright for me. So I'm going to take this and sponge around him. And maybe leave a little vanilla around him so it kind of looks like a little light around him. And not much. There we go. So that's all vintaged up good. And I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back, one in each corner. With it being a square, one in each corner should be fine. There's not too much of a gap between dimensionals. So one in each cor corner will be plenty. Now I'm going to bring my card back in. Take off the backing. And put him and have him go over the trim a little bit. Make sure he's straight. And there's the card. Now, I also decorated the inside because the cherry cobbler is a little too dark to write on. So I'm going to grab this piece of four inch by five and a quarter, very vanilla. I'm going to take the wheat stamp and I'm going to ink it up with the crushed curry. And just stamp it here in the bottom left corner. There we go. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and uh, do some crumb cake. On, I mean, crumb cake ink on this too. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Oops, flipping paper, <laughs> and just put it in the center inside your card, and that's it. There's the card. So there's the outside, and there's the inside. I hope you enjoyed today's card. Um, if you want to be notified every time I do a video, please subscribe below to my YouTube channel. And I've got links to my Dolly Rewards program I talked about earlier in this video and my Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook pages. And make sure you check out my blog at www.createwithchristy.com. And I've got some projects there that I haven't made videos for that have tutorials that you can use. So I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon.